What's all with the lava? I was fast asleep when you phoned. What are you doing with the vac? Well, there's only one thing a vac's any use at, Alec. That's cleaning up mess. What, on a Sunday? You flipped. You've gone potty. I thought when you phoned you sounded hysterical. Alec, will you just listen for once? Brenda from the Southampton office phoned me at home first thing this morning. She said she tried to get hold of me last night, only I was uh, out. Yeah, just so get she... to the point because I want to get back to bed. Well, she says that Adam Newbold. Adam Newbold jumped up little office boy, that's all he is. How they could make a twerp like that executive, I don't know. He'd need a book of instructions to sharpen a pencil. Adam Newbold, Sunliners Controller of Business Affairs. <laughs> These damn silly titles they have now. They'll be creating a new executive before you know it. Controller of titles. He is descending on us first thing tomorrow morning. Get away. We'd have been notified. No, no, this is what he does, Alec, according to Brenda. He just turns up. Bingo. What's that poor pie doing in your intro, Mr Gilroy? Do you think we could take the 1996 calendar down off the wall now, Mr Gilroy? Oh, my lord, he, he hates me, Deirdre. He, and for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not what Brenda from head office told me. She said when he was a new boy working for you on a liner, you made him share a cabin with a kiddies entertainer, some chap who had white mice doing tricks. Should have been grateful. He was getting an education. It was him who got me kicked off the line, as you know. He'll not be satisfied till he's seen me on the scrappy. Well, anyway, that's why I rang you and that's why we're here. So the first thing we've got to do is get this office cleaned up. So come on, get your pullover off. There's polishing cloths in that bag there. All these surfaces won't clean it. But you can forget that. I'm the office manager. I'm not a cleaner. Well, I'm not a cleaner either, Alec. But since we haven't had a cleaner since Joyce, what do you suggest? And if you ask me to do it all by myself, I'm going to walk out that door right now and leave you to it. Yeah, now, look, look, let, let's, not, let's not be hasty, eh? I mean, I'm sure we can get it all ship if we just uh, muck in. <laughs> Muck's the right word. There's plenty of that about. That's better. Now we're getting somewhere. Yes. All we've got to do now is uh, straighten the books out, catch up on the correspondence, sort out a couple of dozen cock-ups. Uh, yes, all right, all right. But when Adam Cleverclog's new bull bustles in here tomorrow, he can run his finger anywhere he wants and not find a speck of dust. We wouldn't have had to do all this, Alec, if you'd found us another cleaner to replace poor old Joyce. Ah, well, uh, you see, Deirdre, the thing is... Oh, the hell's that? Flaming cheek on a Sunday. Clear off, we're shut! Oh, it is Harvey, not all. Not all's brewery. Yeah, come in, Harvey, lad, seeing as it's you. <laughs> I'll just pass it. Ah... Uh, I couldn't believe my eyes when I saw you. What, what are you doing, Alec? Cooking the books? Don't say things like that, Harvey. Even in jest. Who's jesting? Still, I'm glad I've seen you. I've got a little business proposition. Oh, well, now you're talking. <laughs> yeah, Deirdre, put the kettle on. You deserve a break. Yeah. Lay on, Macduff. Well, one of our houses, the Albion in Longley Street... Oh, yes, yes, I know it. A great barn of a place. Make a good aircraft hangar. That's it. Well, I'm thinking of putting live shows on to boost it up a bit Thursday through Saturday. Good acts, cheap mind and appealing to the younger end. Oh, you leave it with me. I've got some great acts for you, Harvey. Hey, none of your paper tearers and no dog acts. And I want to see them myself first. Set up some auditions for tomorrow and Tuesday, OK? Well, tomorrow? Oh, oh no, 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 Harvey. You, the snoop is about. You see, be, between us, there's a mad axeman from head office landing on us tomorrow, hoping to take us by surprise. Ah, and you don't want him to realise that you're running your own free house enterprise in his office space, his phone, his time, his heating and his rates. <laughs> Cynical man could say that, I suppose. Uh, but just let it lie for a few days, Harvey. Eh? Let's get point in town, this. Where have you been? Not seen you for ages. I've been busy, lad. I've been putting live entertainment on in some more of my pubs. My idea, that, you know. Uh, well, you know me. Anything to bump trade up. Uh, my flaming idea, and Alec Gilroy gets all the benefit. Yeah, I'll get that down in excellent. What do you think? Beautiful. You've no need to be jealous of Alec Gilroy, though. He's got his problems. Well, that's weird, it, but like what? He's got some bloke from Sunliner's head office on his back, ferreting out all Alec's little enterprises on the side. Well, he wants to apply to me. I'll tell him whatever he wants to know and a bit more on the side. Uh, Dorothy, fluff on your jumper. And your shoes could do with a rub. Oh, my bra doesn't match my knickers. Should I run home and change? 
Honestly, I like Mr. Newbold's coming to look at the business, not do a flipping kit inspection. Shoddy employees are a sign of a shoddy operation. We don't want to give him any excuse for finding fault, not that he'll need one. Right, troops, count down to blast off. 11.30, he said, but well, it's now uh, 11.29, and Newbold's a stickler for punctuality. Ah, so. oh, the... what the heck are you doing here? Oh, I'm sorry, I thought... Under the impression this one is shop. Oh, you, uh, you, you want to buy a holiday? Certainly, our pleasure. No. Uh, Deirdre, make no. a note of Mr. No, Douglas' no. requirement. Not a holiday. A band. I beg your pardon? Or your Pasadena Roof Orchestra than your Guns N' Roses. Oh, look, Jack, I can't discuss this see, now. See, I, I thought you could do me a favour price-wise, seeing as I'm about to do you one. What are you on about? Well, if you knock off your commission, then I will keep my big trap shut about you're moonlighting when your big cheese gets here. Are you threatening me? No, no, no. Well, it is more than you. You scratch you, and I'll scratch you. I warn you, Jack, I can be a very dangerous enemy. Ah! Ah, oh, Mr. Newbold. Ah, Adam. Ah, ah, uh, welcome. Welcome to our little far flung outpost of the Sunliners' Empire. Uh, Mrs. Rashid, Mrs. Buxton, Mr. Newbold, controller of business affairs. We've heard a lot about you, Mr. Newbold. Likewise. Why don't you see to your client, Alec? I'm sure Mrs. Rashid is uh, perfectly capable of giving me the guided tour. Ah, oh, no, that's quite all right. Uh, Mr. Duckworth was just uh, going. Now, now, remember what I said. It, it was lively, switched on, but not ear splitting. And not too big. Rules out Magaluf. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Duckworth was very picky about his holiday resort. Well, I'm sure Sunliners can find you the ideal destination, Mr. Duckworth. I'm sure we can. Well, I must say, everything seems to be fine. <laughs> yes, well, as I might expect with my track record, Mr Newbold. <laughs> Adam. <laughs> but on these look -sees, I do like to meet up with every name on the payroll. It's all part of the Sunliners family, all creatures great and small, all that. Well, well, well you have uh, met all the staff. Uh, except for a Mrs J Smedley. Ah, well, unfortunately, poor Joyce. He is off with flu. Uh, yes, uh, she won't be back until Wednesday. No problem. Wednesday's fine. Uh, oh, but I thought you were going back to London tonight. I mean, she is only the cleaner. Uh, only the cleaner, Alec. Tut tut. No, change of plan. I've got to bob over to the new Liverpool branch. Some teething glitches. What time will she be on Wednesday? Late. I uh, well, uh, very very late. Then ask her to make it a little earlier. Let's say mid afternoon. I'd like to leave before the rush hour. Till Wednesday. Yes, sir. Bye. Bye. Bye, Mr. Newbold. <laughs> Adam. Yeah. What's she still doing on the payroll? An administrative oversight. I don't believe it. You've been claiming her wages. <laughs> Alec, you mucky little scams are no skin off my nose. But you have just promised his nibs he can meet Mrs. Smedley. What were you planning to do? Take him on a nice little trip round the crematorium? <laughs> What the hell do you want? Now, that is the way I was greeted this morning in his gaff. Which is why I'm here to apologise, Jack. Put it down to that modern-day ailment stress. What about them threats about being a bad enemy? That a modern-day ailment too, was it? Well, as I say, I was out of order. It was a perfectly legitimate request. I mean, you want live music, then I'm your man. For you, Jack, I'll even skip my commission. What, no Mr. Ten Percent? Or in your case, Mr. Hundred and Ten Percent? Well, as a local businessman, I mean, it's in my interest. I mean, if this pub thrives, it regenerates the whole neighbourhood. Oh, come on, you just got the wind up because that's an bubble you're a sunline, is it so? That was nasty. No. Not as nasty as you cutting me out of my old deal with Harvey Nuttall, it wasn't. Then we're quits. No. Agreed? No. Because you did the dirty. I only said I would. Go on, then. You deliver them. My lips are sealed. Done. Oh, and well, Jack, Jerry, there's another little favour you can do for me while you're at it. All right. I've been on that phone all morning calling him favours. Nobody, nobody willing to dive in and save me. 
It's a mess, isn't it? And you've been no help whatsoever. You do know that, don't you? It isn't me who keeps dead people on the payroll, Alec. Am I to be condemned for an oversight? Pressure of work? Well, tell Adam Newbold that when he comes in. He'll want to know why I didn't tell him. I, mean, I should notice, shouldn't I, if a member of staff snuffs it? Has it happened before? You know, on the line, a similar sort of thing. Paying bogus people, do you mean? No. Mrs Mary Rose, Mr LJ Silver, head cook and bottle washer. You're not listening. I, I could sue you, you know, for what you're saying. I'm not saying anything. I just meant crossing Adam Newbold. I mean, you said yourself he's got it in for you. <sighs> well, maybe he won't come back. Oh, oh, he'll come back all right. He's just keeping me dangling, isn't it? Ah, well, it, it'll be me that'll be dangling when he does turn up. I think there's enough money in petty cash to buy a clothesline. Well, I don't know what's to become of us. There you bad. are, Gilroy. Rita! Why, you've pulled some strokes in your time, but this one beats the band. Whatever possessed you? What do you think it'd do to young Judy if she ever found out? Ah, uh, Vera Duckworth. Well, you know, Vera. I mean, she's always Are you in on this as well? I most certainly am not. I think it stinks. I've told him. You were going to ask me this morning in the cabin, weren't you? No. Yes, no. you were. You're sick, Alec Gilroy. You are sick. And I hope whoever finds out doesn't stop at sacking you. I hope they prosecute, cos you want locking up, you do. You want locking up. Um, Alec, he's here. Mr Newbold. Hello, everyone. We uh, did see mid-afternoon, didn't we, Mrs. Rajin? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, you see, the thing is... Ah, Mrs. Uh, Smedley. Uh, the lady I've come to see. Glad to meet you. Adam Newbold, Controller of Business Affairs. Welcome aboard Sunliners. I just want you to know how much your work here is appreciated. Mr. Gilroy's a hard taskmaster, I know. Not working you into the ground, I hope. Into the ground? No. No. Please, uh, don't let me stop you getting on with it. Right. I'll go and put my overall on. Yes, thank you, uh, Joyce. Yes. Oh, oh, by the way, uh, just give those Venetian blinds a good fettling. You missed them last week. <laughs> a cup of coffee before you go, Adam. Ah, uh, uh, really, moustache, sorry. Got to catch the 350. I'll be in touch, Mrs. Rushy. Bye. <laughs> Gilroy! Oh, yes, we we go back a long way, me and Sam. It was him who hired me as entertainments manager on the cruises, you know. But well, why drag you all the way down to Southampton? Oh, it's a privilege being invited down there. It's like being summoned to the palace. So you reckon this could be promotion, then? Well, it makes sense. I mean, I've been here a year now. Served me time after being kicked off the boats. Adam Newbold's given me a clean bill of health. Oh, yes, I, I think it's time I came out of exile. But what will that mean? Oh, well, that's anybody's guess. I mean, they're opening a new branch in Dublin during the summer, you know. And then, of course, there's been a big shake-up on the boats these last few months. I've got a feeling, you know, that I, I could be going back to sea. Oh, Alec, put in a good word for me, will you? Uh, you stick with me, dear, dear. You'll not go far wrong. <laughs> anyway, there you go. OK, bye-bye. I had a bombshell yesterday. Alec goes down to Southampton to see the company chairman. I get a phone call saying they're sacking him. And will I take over as manager of this place? No. Don't say anything to anybody, will you? Well, I won't breathe a word. What did you say to them? Well, I said I was going to need time to think about it. I mean, I don't want to feel as if I'm taking advantage of the rotten trick they're playing on him. Oh, no. Oh, morning. Oh, morning, morning. 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 Uh, anyway, I'll uh, I'll let you get on. I, I just called in for some brochures. Oh, well, take your pick. We've plenty of them. <laughs> well, I've got what I want. Thank you. Uh, yes, Bye. Bye, love. Bye. You can't imagine Emily on holiday, can you? Swanning about in a bikini doing the birdish song. Ah, <laughs> uh, how was Southampton? Oh, it, it, it was fine, thanks, yes. Um, had a very interesting lunch with the chairman. 
I mind you, it uh, didn't come for free. Wanted to pick me brains on how to keep the organisation afloat, so to speak. <laughs> Was anything said about this place? Only what a wonderful job we're doing and how they're desperate for me to carry on. <laughs> I said, I said, well, I'm not a young man. I thought I'd sit back, take life a bit easier, but no, no, he wasn't having any of that. No, practically on his knees, begging me to stop on. <laughs> anyway, I'll make a start. I won't mind a coffee if there's one going. There will be. Oh, you're all right, you don't want me to bring your sandwich back? Alec. What? They rang me yesterday, Sunliners. Asked me if I wanted your job. <laughs> Did they? Didn't even trust me to tell you myself. I'm sorry. Oh, it's not your fault. It's not even mine this time, just... Thanks for all you've done, but we don't want you anymore, so clear off. When, though? I mean, how long before you're supposed to go? Two weeks. I, I would have told you, you know. I was just, you know, working my way around to it. Of course, there'll be a golden handshake to soften the blow. Really? Well, a few quid. Keep me in fags for a month, that's about it. Hey, come on, don't look so sad. I've survived worse, this is not. I didn't know what to say when they asked me if I wanted to take over. A simple yes would be my recommendation. But then I'd be benefiting from what they're doing to you. Well, somebody's got to. Rather it were you than some southerner. Come on. If I've taught you nothing else, surely that it's somebody close to you meets with misfortune, always take full advantage. Now, Alec was very good about it. He said I'd be a fool not to accept their offer. So in the end I did. Oh, well, congratulations. <laughs> I did make one promise, though. If anybody asks, the story is he's retiring of his own accord. Well, they certainly won't hear different from me. <laughs> oh, yes, they, I, I mean, they, they had me down to Southampton, five-star hotel job, then it was lunch with the chairman. Oh. What could they do to persuade me to stop on? But uh, I stood my ground. I said, listen, I said, I've got the best years of my life still ahead of me. I intend to spend them for my benefit, not yours. <laughs> I don't know how I ever got into this business. I mean, travel agent. I don't even like travelling. I'd sooner stop at home. Can I ask you about this Las Vegas special, this DR653, ten nights for two that we've had part? Ah, uh, uh, yes, uh, yes, don't, uh, don't, don't worry about it. I shall be dealing with that. Well, it, it's down as being paid in full. Uh, yes, that's because it, it, it has. Who by? Uh, by, uh, look, look, I've just told you, you don't need to worry about it. Well, I think I do, if I'm going to be taking over. Come on, Alec. I think we both know what's been going on. Excuse me, but I don't know what you mean by that. Anyway, I, I've got work to do. I haven't got time for idle gossip. It's why we never advertise that 10% uh, discount promotion in January and February, isn't it? Why all the posters and stickers for it went straight in the bin. Do you mind? I'd rather you didn't come barging in here. Because instead of giving the discount to the customers, like we should have been doing, it all got sidetracked into paying for that little holiday. And one or two more besides, I dare say. Oh, oh, so, so that's what you think? It's what I know. Oh, yeah, well, there, there you better ring the police, hadn't you? Or head office, yes. You might do yourself a bit of good there. And show how keen you are by sticking the boot into your former boss after he's been sacked. Yeah, go down very well with the current management, would that? I don't want to ring anybody. Oh, well, in that case, would you kindly excuse me? I think you've got a customer to attend to. Look... I'm just asking, will you please get it sorted out before you go? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Your comments have been noted. Oh. Look, I, I don't want us falling out. Me neither. I, I mean, all right. Perhaps it wasn't all above board where that holiday was concerned. But, I mean, it's no more than they owe me, the way this firm's treated me. Can you blame me for helping myself to a bit of a bonus? I'm not blaming anybody, Alec. I just want it sorting out before I take over. Yeah. Hello. Hello. I just thought I'd bring these back. I've kept the one I might be interested oh, in. We don't get many back, but thanks all the same. Well, it would be such a waste just to throw them away. 
Have you ever thought of Las Vegas, Emily? Not really, no. I was thinking of the Cotswolds. I shall let you know when I've decided. <laughs> Bye. 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 Was it a holiday you were going to take yourself? Nah, nah. I can lose my money any number of ways here without going to Las Vegas. No, I might as well tell you, since you know everything else. It was a bit of private enterprise, you know. I was going to sell it through this place as a summer bargain, one third off. Well, you can't. I'm sorry, Alec, but if I'm going to be taking over... Uh, no, 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 no. I, I quite understand. Of course I do. <laughs> But if I can find a way of disposing of it before you take over... Then, as far as I'm concerned, it'll never have existed. Yeah. All right, you have to go. Then. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, change uh, that. All right, then. Oh, tough. How do? Usual. Uh, uh, plus. plus. Have you ever been to Las Vegas, Jack? No. Eighth wonder of the modern world. Why, anyway? Got a, got a proposition to put to you, but not now. Later on, when it's gone quiet. Right. Me done. See you next week. Thank you very much, Betty. Yes, right. ah. Time I weren't here as well. I should be at Thabatoir. Social occasion, is it? It's like everything else, Alec. It's what you make it. See you, Jack. See you, Fred. Right now. You want to hear about this proposition of mine? Oh, I, I forgot about one. Right, well, picture it, Jack. Las Vegas, the city that never sleeps. It's New York, Alec. It's all right, the other city that never sleeps. Anyway, I can't afford a picture it. Never mind flaming gold. Look, if you try to sell some of it, forget it. No, 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 not, not sell, Jack. Not, not sell. This isn't going to cost you a petty piece. Just think of it, ten days in Las Vegas for you and your lovely wife on me. Give over. That's if you want it, Tommy. Come on, what's the catch? Catch? There's no catch, Jack. Unless you count holding a bit of a raffle. Ah, a catch. Stop there, raffle. Doc, you, you can't just go having raffles whenever you feel like, you know, because... Raffles are dodgy. Yes, well, this gets dodgier because you win it. We raffle the holiday. No, 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 you, you do. I shall be sort of behind the scenes. But raffle, yes, I mean, the quicker the better. We don't want to attract undue attention. And all the money then goes to you? Well, fair's fair. It's me that's putting up the prize, and an extremely valuable one it is and all. And then you fix it so I win the raffle? I wouldn't put it like that, Jack. Fix. Let's say stage manage. Ah, well, put it how you like. How are we going to stage manage it? Well, that's my problem, isn't it? All I want to know from you is are we on or not? Because if not, I shall go elsewhere. There'll be no shortage of takers. All right, go on then. So, if we did go on... All right, come in. Right. What have you got there? Look, can we just shut that door? We don't want the whole world knowing our business. It's the poster for the raffle. Now, look, we need to get weaving. I suggest you stick that up in the bar at dinner time. Uh, oh, there's, uh, there's some raffle tickets there. Let me know if you run out. You need a Friends of Weatherfield Hospital. I th thought it were all going to you. Did I say that? You know damn well you did, otherwise you wouldn't be doing it. No, well, the, the thing is, I, I, I thought on reflection, you know, it would be greedy to take everything. So if I can just cover the expenses. How much? Well, I thought 500 quid. Then the rest goes to a good cause. Now, there's nothing illegal about it, Jack, if that's what's worrying you. Oh, right, I, I get it, I get it. Um, I mean, if you took it all, then that'd be too risky, but if you give some to charity, then it looks kosher, doesn't it? You have a very crooked mind, Jack, you know that. I hope you're not thinking of pulling a Franco on me, Alec. What? No, how can I do that? All the ticket money's coming into you. If I didn't try out, you could just hang on to it, couldn't you? As I say, if you're not interested, yeah, I'll... Hey. One false move, though. Oh, it'll go like a dream. You'd best right, Alec. Yeah, well, now, can we start flogging some tickets? You're flying on Saturday. My love. Oh, thanks, Betty. Tajik, what's this? Well, that's what I wondered. Looks quite good till you get to the, the picture stuck on, doesn't it? <laughs> Trust him to cut corners. Him? Alec Gilroy. He's doing it, apparently. <laughs> Las Vegas, eh? Aye. 
League Round of the Rich and Famous. Fancy a plus? Well, it's cheap enough. Well, exactly. I mean, you're a travel agent. How much would it cost to buy that, eh? Over a grand, I bet. Oh, okay. yes. I'd say £1,253, including airport Ooh. tax. At a rough guess. <laughs> Is Alec around today? I'd like a word with him. Um... <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> Deirdre. <laughs> Uh, uh, what can I get you? That is the American Dream special, I take it. Ten nights for two. What a remarkable memory, eh? <laughs> I, could, I could find work for you as a turn, you know. You were supposed to be getting rid of it. Yes, well, so I am. I didn't say how, did I? In any case, I don't think it's any of your business. No, I expected it to go quietly, not in some great blaze of publicity. I could get into trouble with Sunliners for this. And what's the hospital got to do with it? I've got, I've got to sell it before Friday when I leave, haven't I? This was the best I could come up with. Anyway, I know it'll go wrong, and if it does, it's my pigeon. You knew nothing about it. Just don't expect me to bail you out, Alec. You've only got so much loyalty. I want a word with you, pal, but now. You are ripping some liners off, then. Hello, Dad. There's nothing for you to worry about. Well, why not let me know what's going on? Everything is under control. Alec, if you don't fill me in on how I come to win this thing, the deal's off. Oh, all right. Yeah, you'll have to know sooner or later. There's nobody about, is there? Right. Here goes. Phase two. Hi, Mike. Oh, hi. What can I do for you? I want 10, 14 days somewhere hot and exclusive. ASAP. Oh, I'm sure we can fix you up with something. Oh, good. Alec, I'll come straight to the point. I've had second thoughts. We can't pull out now. We've started selling tickets. Police, sniffing about. Police. Alan McKenna. What, Phil the Middleton's boyfriend? He doesn't count. You wouldn't say that if you saw the way he was looking at your flaming poster. Uh, hey, our poster. We're in this together. Mm. Did everything but check flaming fingerprints, and then he started asking questions. Then, like, how many tickets have you sold, and that? Oh, aye. How many have we sold, by the way? I don't know about sixty, I suppose. Is that all? Look, I told you that poster was prominent enough, Jack. Now you are telling your bastard have to cajole the punters, aren't you? People are buying the tickets, Alec. Alan McKenna bought two. Oh, well, well, that's because he expects to win. Yes, but we both know he flaming won't. Oh, oh, well, yes, but, I mean, he's hardly likely to send in the fraud squad. He might do if he finds any wrongdoing. Look, Jack, if you're getting cold feet, there's only one course of action open to me. What's that? I shall have to arrange for someone else to win it. Not flaming likely. Now, who's the most deserving, do you think? Emily Bishop? Betty Williams? Oh, no. D.C. McKenna. Now, that'd really put him off the scent, wouldn't it? And I'm sure he and Fiona would have a grand old time. You give over. Anybody going to Las Vegas, it's going to be me. Anyone else back there, and you might have had some explaining to do, but Curly... Oh, Bill can't have seen anything wrong in that. Well, as it turns out, he did. But, you know, throw it's all off. <laughs> oh, no. I'm sorry. Hey, do you want to come for a drink? Well, I've got such a lot to do here. And I can't close early, cos Mr Sugden might be patrolling out there. <laughs> oh, OK. But chin up, eh? Yeah. I'm sure he'll come round. Deirdre, why didn't it work for you and Ken, you know, the last time? Well, there was somebody else, but... But, but there wouldn't have been, would there? Had everything been all right? <sighs> no, well. I suppose not. Bill is very different from Reg, you know. Oh, Reg was very different from everybody, <laughs> wasn't he? Yeah. <laughs> Listen, are you sure I can't tempt you? Well, Bill might be there. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> you're here now. Yeah. I just wanted to check all was well. <sighs> I, I called round this morning, there was nobody here. Uh, you, you don't sell the 8mm elastic, do you? Uh, no, uh, six, I think. Uh, no, no, it needs to be eight. Never mind. Uh. What are you having, Rita? It's my bag. No, thanks, love. 
I'm not stopping. So, how was your first day in charge? Oh, quiet, lonely. You know, it's different without Alec <laughs> wheeling and dealing all over the place. You'll miss all that. Oh, yeah, like toothache. <laughs> no, I'll see you later. Ta-da, Rita. So you'll do an hour for me tonight, then, Betty? Yeah, of course I will. Enjoy yourself, love. Don't rush back. Oh, no, I'll be back by 7.30. I won't put on you, I promise. Mm. Our new boss, she's that conscientious, she's not done a thing we could stick to Jack Avera about. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've certainly got Betty's vote. <sighs> And you're doing all right with Jim MacDonald. Who told you that? No one. I saw him on the street this morning. We're having a meal together, that's all. No big deal. Listen, um, I don't know how to put this, but be careful. What are you trying to say? He beats up women? No! Oh, I, I wouldn't go so far as that. I like Jim. He did lay into Liz once, but some might say he was provoked. Well, that's no excuse, is it? I'm not saying it is. Well, thank you, Deirdre. Um, I appreciate it. I hope I do the same for you. You would. But Jim's been really honest with me. I mean, he's told me all that happened with Liz, you know, as much as you would expect him to say. Well, as long as you've got no illusions. We're having one meal together instead of having two meals on our own. That's all. We're just good friends. I must have been fooling myself that I was having a good time. But I did enjoy myself. And I come back to all this lot. Well, Maureen's miserable too. Could have got your eyes crossed, you know. How do you mean? Well, if she had a rotten weekend, wouldn't you notice? Yeah. But she had a good time, she enjoyed herself. We went for walks, we went to see a show. She wasn't pleading with you to bring her home? No. Look, the whole thing could be a misunderstanding. Why don't you go on and talk to her? You. To both of us. It's about time the gods smiled on us. Yeah. Well, I'm glad somebody's got yeah. something to celebrate. It's Madam's new job. Oh! I shall drink to that. <laughs> Samantha, can we have another bottle of red wine over here, please? Hang on, we've only just started this one. When we finish that, then we'll have another one. Let's toast Liz's job in style. You don't <laughs> even know what it is yet. What is it? It's a hotel, the Warwick on Chepstow Road. Ooh, just a minute. Uh, right. To the Warwick. To the Warwick. To the Warwick. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I've been thinking... Uh... Might be better if I uh, move out of the flat. Well, I can put up with it if you can. Put up? With me being your tenant? No, with the situation. Oh. Well, if you can put up with it, uh, I can. For the time being. Don't ask. <clears throat> Hiya. Hello. Uh, just a loaf, Maud. And what have you got planned for today? Anything special? Just going to write a few uh, estimates up, like. Well, let's hope you have a busy day, then. Well, more estimates, more work. Well, I'll tell you what, you can write as many estimates up as you like. But somebody's got to accept them. They've got to want what you're offering. Thank you. Ta. Don't you say anything. I wasn't going to. It's difficult with him being so close. Well, it wouldn't have been if you hadn't kicked him into touch. Oh, mother. I won't say another word. Hello. Hi. Hiya. I was just wondering if you fancied a night out would celebrate me promotion. Oh, I'd love to, but I can't. I'm working at the Warwick all week. Oh. I'll go if it's company you're looking for. Do you fancy it? Yeah. Well, it might help me forget me and mother and Bill and Curly. <laughs> I hate to miss out. Well, we could always come down to the Warwick. Ah. Oh, well, great. Yeah, whenever you fancy. Like I say, I'm working there all week. Uh, Peter, uh, Emily, I was just about getting myself a drink. Uh, can I, can oh, I get Oh, no, 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 no. This is my round. A uh, small Irish. Oh, very nice. And a sweet shilling. Thank you. So, have you delivered that cheque to the hospital yet, Emily? Uh, yes, I took it in yesterday. <laughs> I trust my modest fundraising efforts were duly appreciated. Everyone was very grateful, Mr Gilroy. What a pity people don't follow our example, Emily. The world would be a much better place. Yes. A bit more give, a bit less take all the time. Make the world a difference. Mr Gilroy... You see, man has this capacity for charity, Emily. That's what puts him above the animal kingdom. <laughs> yes, indeed. Mr Gilroy, I'm, I'm sorry to have to tell you this. Everyone was, of course, delighted with your efforts. But there is a slight problem. Problem. Well, not exactly a problem, more of an omission. The, the treasurer of the Friends of Weatherfield Hospital did say we would have to provide some documentation. Documentation? Regarding the raffle. 
Nothing complicated, just a breakdown of ticket sales. She mentioned particularly the ticket stubs. Ticket stubs? She calls ticket stubs after I've donated 250 quid. I think it's something to do with accountability. I, I know it's an imposition after the work you've put in, Mr Gilroy. An imposition? It's a damned insult. But it's just that we have to be so careful these days. What with all these charity fiddles you read about. Fiddles? I'm not stopping here to listen to this. If they don't want my money, they can give it me back. I'll donate it to a more grateful and less bureaucratic cause. Was Alec that just nearly trampled me into the ground, was it? I think Emily's upset him. Oh, please, Rita, don't. Oh, what have you said? I only asked him for the ticket stubs. Yes, he gave Emily the cheque, but no ticket stubs. Just as a matter of interest, how much was the cheque he gave you for? Oh, it was very generous. £250. Is that all? How much were the tickets? A fiver each. And I remember Maggie Ardcastle buying four. He must have sold more than 50 tickets. Oh, he sold more than that in a year. So where's the rest of the money? Good question. Do you know, he got that already from Sunliners. If there's anything dodgy going on, I don't want their name dragging into it. Well, don't you worry. I've told Emily I'll see Alec for it, and I will. And it'll be more than a few ticket stubs I'll be after, I can tell you. Go through, Rita. You left in hurry, didn't you? Uh, I should think I did, after what she said to me. I worked my hands to the bone, raising all that money, and all I get is my kindness thrown back in my face. All they wanted was a few ticket stubs. Look, unnecessary bureaucracy. I write a big fat cheque, and all I get is a pathetic message from Emily Bishop about paperwork. Mm. Here, do you want a drink? I'll have a vodka, yes. Now, just as a point of interest, how much was the big fat cheque? It, it was a substantial amount. How substantial? It was enough. Don't want folk knowing how much it was. Well, it must have been a big one then. Cos I reckon you sold 200 tickets at a fiver each. That's a thousand pounds. That's nowhere near that. There, there, there were expenses. Oh, 750 quid's worth of expenses? 750? Where do you get that figure from? Well, you made a thousand pounds. You gave Emily a cheque for 250. That left 750 pounds. Look, I've just told you, it's a wild overstatement. And I'm telling you, Alec, it's a wild understatement. So sort it. Sort it for Emily's sake, for Deirdre's sake, and for your own sake. And do it today. Cheers. Thanks, love. Thank you, Betty. Oh, Have you seen who I've seen? Oh, yes. I wonder whether I dare ask him for those ticket stubs now he's here. I think I'd leave it a minute or two, Emily. It's a package with Friends of Weatherfield Hospital on it, probably with my name, Mark. Alec, I've got no time. I've got customers to see to. Please, Samantha, this is charity we're talking about. Yeah, come on, Samantha. Would you withhold succour to the needy? <sighs> All right, then. Oh, thank you, Ken. No, no, Samantha. Samantha, please. Look, there's, uh, there's money involved here, a great deal of money. Now, it's in your interest to have a witness present when you go rummaging through Vera's drawers, if you'll pardon the expression. Besides, I know what we're looking for. Are you saying I'm dishonest? Good heavens, no. Right, then, come on, but hurry up. Ali, where's he going? Get on with the job, Betty. Charming. <laughs> Right, now you say it's in the drawer, Alec. Well, more than likely. Uh, Jack was going to let me have it before he went to uh, Las Vegas, but you know what a rush everything was before the off. Well, I'm sorry, but it's not here. Uh -huh. Are you sure he left it? Uh, oh, yes. Uh, uh, could it possibly be in the kitchen, do you think? No, I'm sorry, Alec, it's not here. Now, I'll have to get back to the bar. Uh, oh, no, it, it couldn't be anywhere else, I suppose. Oh, Alec, please, have a pub to run. Look, this is very important to me, Samantha. Uh, could it be among that lot there? Oh, yeah, here you are. Friends of Weatherfield Hospital, care of Alec Gilroy. Oh, uh -huh. I, I knew it was... Thank you, Samantha. 
Emily! Emily! Problem solved. <laughs> and I'm sorry, I must apologise for my little bout of petulance earlier on today. But, you know, I, you see, I knew Jack was responsible for the final count-up, but as he's in the States, well, I thought, anyway, as luck would have it, I asked Samantha to go through their drawers and see if she couldn't find these stubs. <laughs> and you found them? Well, we found this. I think it's what we're after. <laughs> uh, oh, no, please, it's addressed to you. Oh, well, all right, with, with your permission, then. Uh, all right. Oh, oh, all that money! <laughs> oh, my goodness, Alec, you did make a lot on that raffle. More than I thought, it seems. <laughs> a lot more. But that's wonderful. How much is that? Well, there's uh, one, two, three, four, five, five hundred and uh, twenty-five. Uh, plus the two hundred and fifty on the cheque. That's <gasps> seven hundred and seventy-five pounds. Well done, Alec. Well, you, you do what you can, Deirdre. Oh, and the stubs. Oh, and a breakdown. Mr Gilroy, what can I say? Oh, well, I say this calls for a round of drinks. I think it's your turn, isn't it? Oh, no, I'll get these. It's the least I can do after such a magnificent effort. Magnificent effort? Well, yes, I'd go along with that. <laughs> magnificent effort, Alec. And I'm sure you've given us all a great deal of satisfaction. I know you have me. Right, what do you fancy? Ooh, I'll have a and t please, and hey, go easy on the tea. <laughs> <laughs> hey, come on, can we have some service over here? Less of that. I've heard what you two are like with a couple of shorts inside you. So what are you going to do, get us thrown out by the bouncers? Ooh, yes, let's go some more double. <laughs> <laughs> Two gin and tonics, please, Liz. Coming up, girls. So, what do you think of the place? Yes, it's very nice. It's, uh, it's, it's classier, but it's not... Um... Well, it's not intimidating, is it? Here we are. They tell me that we get quite a few businessmen in here. Mm. Businessmen? There's a lot of men, full stop. Hmm? Hey, you don't think it's, um... What? Oh, one of them pubs, you know. One of them places where men get together. Like the Ravers Return? <laughs> no. A gay bar. <laughs> now, listen, I didn't know this when I told you to come down here for a drink, but... It's singles night. Singles as in... As in unattached. As in available. As in desperate. Oh, flipping it, Liz, you could have told us. Honestly, I really didn't know. But let's face it, we could do with meeting a few good men. So what are, what are they like, some of them? Oh, you know the sort. Ex-Royal Marines who just made a killing on the stock market. Cool. They like to relax here before cruising off around the Riviera. <laughs> well, you never know, we might get lucky. Well, if you look round, I mean, some of them don't look bad, do they? Yeah, when you've had a few. You know, they might just be genuine, interested men who just pop down and don't know that it's a single... How are you? <laughs> hey, have you been into the lab? The seed's fallen off. Oh, oh, yes, it's disgusting. Fancy chanting upon you here. I was, ju I was just passing outside uh, and I thought to myself, ooh, that Warwick Hotel looks like a comfy place. Especially on singles night. Singles night? What's that mean? Don't they serve doubles then? You mean you really didn't know? Didn't know what? Nice place though, isn't it? I say, isn't it a nice place? Nice decor. Lots of it. Nice atmosphere. It's always a pleasure when you find a new place like this, venture into uncharted territory. <laughs> your usual, Mr. Elliot. Eh? From one of your regular admirers. Uh, I think she said Mandy for her name. Uh, 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 so she's mistaken me for somebody else. Easy mistake, I say, easy mistake. A lot of Elliot's in the gene pool. Only the other day I met this lad. Spitting image of me when I were eight. Same profile, only the nose are a bit more Roman. <laughs> Elliot in there, I thought. So what do you make of all the talent, then? <sighs> not a lot. Mm. I mean, it's not saying much when Fred Elliot's the best-looking man in the pub. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, a pint of bitter, please? Thank 
Thank you kindly, my lovely. Well, thank cheers. you. Cheers. Now then, shall we be down seated? Oh, yes, why not? Will you come in, Deirdre? Uh, yeah, I'll be there in a minute. Okay. There's room over there. So, what do you think? Not bad for single, is it? There's nothing wrong with being single, Liz. You and I should know that well enough. Mm, well, maybe there's something wrong with him. Perhaps he leaves his tea bags on the side at sink. <laughs> hey, he can leave his tea bags on the side of my sink any day. So do you fancy him? Well, I fancy him more than I fancy Fred Elliot, I'll say that much. Well, perhaps you should go over and say hello. You know, talk to him. Fred Elliot? No, Mel Gibson. <laughs> over there. Go on, ask him out. Don't be daft. It's not daft. It's singles night. That's what people do on singles night. They talk to each other. I only said I thought he was good looking. Excuse me. My friend fancies you. Liz! Oh, I am so sorry. I'd say you can't take her anywhere, but it's her bar. It's no problem. I'm John. Oh. Without an H. Deirdre. So, do you? What? Fancy me. Or does she do that to all her mates? Oh, but I, I don't even know you. I thought you didn't look the type for the singles night. It's a bit of a zoo. Uh, there are one or two animals about, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, are you? Single? Well, yes, as a matter of fact, I am. Although I'm not actually here for the singles night. Well, I, I am here for it, obviously, but uh, I didn't know it was a singles night. But then I suppose uh, that's what they all say. No, don't worry, I believe you. But only because we're in the same boat. We're here because of Liz. So, um, if you're not here for the singles night, why are you here? I'm staying in the hotel. I've just flown in from Frankfurt. Oh, what do you do there? Nothing. Well, I fly the plane. I'm an airline pilot. I usually stay somewhere more uh, upmarket, but it was full tonight, so... Well, actually, I'm in the travel business as well. Sunliners. We do package deals. You may have heard of us. No. Oh, well. Perhaps not. We are a bit small fry. Well, I don't fly package flights anyway. I'm strictly long and short haul commercial. Well, do you fancy another? Why not? Well, I've uh, got a long day tomorrow, so... Um... Oh, well, it was nice meeting you anyway. It was nice meeting you too. Good night. Good night. Force him into a night of passion. Oh, I'm tempted, I'll tell you. I just don't know what to make of him. Do you think he really is a pilot? Yeah, he looks it. Do you know, I think you have just passed up on the genuine article you made. Well, whether he's the real thing or not, it doesn't really matter, does it? I'm never going to see him again. Come on, Maureen. Time we were off. Fred, if you want to come into the shop for a cuppa any time you want, you're very welcome. <laughs> I'd be charmed. Oh. Good night, dear lady. Mm. <laughs> I'll not stop you, otherwise your carriage might turn into a pumpkin. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, dear Good lady. night, Fred. Bye, <laughs> Fred. <laughs> you oh, have asked Fred Elliot to go for a cup of tea. <laughs> on a singles night. <laughs> oh, there's no harm in it. <laughs> dear. Take come on. <laughs> bye. Good night, bye. Hi. Hi. Can I help you at all? I think I'm just fantasising. Oh, about anywhere in particular? About everywhere. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, I'll help you. Oh. Um, what length of trip were you planning to take? I'm not sure. I think maybe just a weekend to start with. I've not travelled alone before. There's always been, you know, my husband, the kids, friends, but next time I get away, I think it's just going to be me. Well, actually, going on holiday on your own can turn out to be better than you think. Have you, um, ever thought about Morocco? Oh, sorry about the wait. Not at all. I'm still fairly new to it all. I think the customers are in need of a holiday by the time I get to the end of my spiel. You sounded very professional to me. Oh, well, my geography's a bit hazy. You know, I nearly sent ten passengers to Madrid instead of Malta last week. <laughs> I nearly made the same mistake myself once. I'm sure. No, no, it's true. It's easily done. It's not good for a pilot. <laughs> I, uh, I came to ask you out. Oh. I didn't quite find the courage last night. See? And you clearly weren't expecting to see me again. Well, to be honest, no. 
Am I wasting my time? I wasn't there for the singles night, you know. And I just happened to be staying in that hotel. You're not married, are you? Uh, no. Have been. So where does that leave someone who'd like to take an interest? Oh. I'm sorry. I'm being really awkward, aren't I? <laughs> no, no, no. You're being careful. Like you were last night. Do you want to try me on a drink and see how I shape up? Yeah. That'd be nice, thank you. And is, is it okay to phone you here? Well, I'm the boss. Well, that's what I'll do then. Oh. You know those are a bit out. Oh, I, uh, I didn't actually. But then that's me. I don't always get everything right straight off. Bye. Bye. Hi. So, Spill, what has happened in the past few hours since we're last together? What do you mean? Has there been a follow-up to Singles Night? Uh, uh... Deirdre phoned me and said I was to meet you and her here. Oh, hi. Oh, hi. 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 Uh, I'm sorry I missed you at the shop, but Maud said you'd be in here anyway. Oh, right. Well, what's this all about? Why have we been summoned? I had a visit today oh. at work. Not Fred Elliot. Oh, give me strength. <laughs> Anyway, you only had eyes for Maureen. No, the airline pilot, <gasps> in full uniform, no less. No. In uniform? I wasn't impressed. Oh, oh no! I was, but I mustn't be. Who says? Hey, where's your jetting off to next? Oh, I don't know. I forgot to ask. Oh. Well, did you show any interest at all? Well, I said he could ring me at work. Oh, why not at all? He could have phoned you from Paris or Roma. We're oh. just meeting for a drink first, that's all. Hey, he might have suggested Paris or Rome if you'd have shown a bit of encouragement. <laughs> now, don't tell me, I say, don't tell me. I've stumbled on another singles evening. <laughs> <laughs> I'm off then. Okay. I'll see you later, Maureen. Right, right wait until late. Right. Bye, girls. Ta -da, see ya. <laughs> she's not, I say, she's not still seeing that builder chap, is she? Uh, listen, Maureen, about the things that were said between us the other day... I well, don't remember. I'm sure you do. I don't want reminding. According to you, there's very little between us. It's silly of me, isn't it, to think there was respect? Hi, please, Sam. You know something, Ken? I don't think I'm going to bother with women ever again. Well, I'm thinking of starting up a society in my spare time, and I'm about to have a lot of it. You can count me in as your first member. Well, there'll be major fines. Payable to me if it's so much as look at a woman. <laughs> well, don't count on getting rich. Hiya! You lost your ball! <laughs> I tell you, I might lose my bottle if I stand there long enough. What do you think? The flat? For you? Too close to the enemy? Oh, Ken's the least of my worries. Depends what Sean Skinner's asking. Well, I'm sure he offers a discount for unattached females. Have you seen it yet? No, Sean's going to show me round when he turns up. Hey, uh, I don't suppose you'd fancy... I would love to look round with you, but I can't. Jim's had a fallout with Steve. Oh, it didn't take them long, did it? No, well, it's nothing drastic, I hope. Hey, I'll tell you what, give us a knock when you're going back. Will do. All right, I'll see you later. See you, love. So, how did you go on with Steve? Well, sort of settled. Hey, what did you think to Sean's flat? I was impressed. Oh, don't tell him that, I'll put the rent up. <laughs> <laughs> Not likely. I've told him I'll let him know. Oh, uh, did I tell you? I've heard from John. You know you didn't. <laughs> oh, look, the back. Yeah, Butch yeah, Cassidy and the Sundance yeah, Kid. Yeah, uh, never mind that. Yeah. John. I'm meeting him yeah. at your hotel tonight. There we are, my son. You keep the change. <laughs> Did you have a good trip, Jack? Oh, oh do you know it was brilliant, Dave? Hey. Do you want to say Jack? Did we? Trip of a lifetime. I'm thinking of writing to Sunland as a congratulator. Uh, no, don't, Jack. I'm just glad you enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah, it's really good to see you back. Right, come on, you. Chapter and verse. Oh. <laughs> it's a nice ticket traveling. Oh. But it's awful to come home here, isn't it? Well, no. Come, come on. on. You didn't have to cough up 500 quid, did you, Abby? Well, think of the alternative, Jack. 
The FBI interrupting your little sojourn to the sun with a pair of handcuffs? Yeah, he wouldn't have gone that far. Well, it didn't, thanks to me. I have to hide that envelope in your back room and then just pretend I've found it. Why? Well, you and Vera had to be protected. Thanks, Alec. Thanks, Alec. Is that the best you can do? What else? Compensation. Rather large bird tells me you got lucky in Vegas. No, oh, no, no, that was our fear us anyway, anyway. We blew it, didn't we? Yes, but you're not a man to ignore his obligations, are you? You owe me, Jack. Do I? And I'm sure you'll tip up when you consider the possible consequences. Blow the gaff, Alec, and I'll deny all knowledge. What? That you're a fake? You got the holiday on a scam? They wouldn't believe me, of course, but I could try. Come on, you're in as deep as I am, and you know it. You mention out, and it'd be me and thee knitting mailbags together. Come on, you. You've got to get them invoices sorted. That man's coming at nine o'clock. That man? Tomorrow, I. Oh, and is this a first inspection, Jack? So? A word of advice. Don't smile too much. And don't wear your Stetson. Even he won't be convinced you're as daft as you look. Still, it's not till tomorrow. Sleep well, Jack. I keep telling... Do you still see your little boy, Ken? Daniel, when I can, oh. yes. I'm hoping to see more of him once school's finished. Oh, of course. You have all these long holidays, don't you? Well, this one's going to be a very long holiday, Maureen. I'm finishing for good. Uh, oh, just a sec. Get another job, won't you? Are you offering? Mm -hmm. I meant with your qualifications, there's bound to be something. <coughs> what was it? Oh, nobody. At uh, 2.35, please, Ken. No, I'll spend the, uh, the first couple of weeks assessing my situation and trying to get my life back in some sort of order. Bye. Bye. There's your chairs. Cheers. <laughs> How's it been? Strange. In need of company. Mine, even. Not exactly buzzing in here, is it? Too quiet for you? Hmm. A bit. Do you uh, want to go and sit down, mate? Yeah, if you like. Over there, suit you? Yeah. Go for it. Cheers, Mum. Go on. Hi. Hi. <laughs> is John not here yet? No, not yet. Hey. You look knockout. Oh, thanks. I should do. I've been sticking and pasting for two hours. Well, go sit yourself down and I'll bring you a G&T over. Uh, do you think the boys would mind if I sat with them? Oh, no. John might get the wrong idea. Oh, well, I'll just stop here then, shall I? No. No, I wouldn't. Some men don't like to see a woman propping up a bath. Should I go out and come in again? <laughs> go sit down on your own and I'll bring you a drink over. Oh, I'm not used to this. <laughs> So you reckon these VAT people are quite human, dear Fred? Depends how you play it, Jack. Offer no strong drink, just cups of tea and a few fancies. No problem. Right, right. Evening, Jack. Usual. Uh, for starters. Telling me earlier about Vegas. What kind of pudding spends his time gambling when there's all them wenches about? 120. Thank you. In the great. All right. Yeah, mate. Mm -hmm. Hiya. Um, how's Vicky? Look, I'm, I'm interested, Alec. I, uh, I want her to do well. She's done very well since she ditched you. Look, there's no ulterior motive here, Alec. I, um, well, I just wanted to know that I'm sorry for what I put her through. Something you said? Obviously, Jack. Two pints here, please, mate. Coming up, son. He's not coming, is he? I'll fetch you another drink over. I've had three. Well, have another. Oh, go on, then. Might as well get sloshed as sit here wishing I had. Deirdre, I can't apologise enough. To tell you the truth, I was half hoping you wouldn't be here. Uh, don't get me wrong, I'm delighted. It's just that I had no idea how I was going to entertain you. <laughs> but you're doing all right so far. 
I'm not the world's best conversationalist, I know. It's got worse since Linda and I split up. Linda? My wife. Ex-wife. So you've been married then? Briefly. There was no one else involved, thankfully. Apart from my work. And no children either, which was a blessing. Even when I was there, we didn't have much to say to each other. Come to think of it, I haven't got that much to say to anybody. Stop knocking yourself. The divorce was amicable enough. We exchanged Christmas cards. Where is she now? Devon, with her new bloke. He works in a bank, feet firmly on the ground. <laughs> there's me yawning on and there's you drinking from an empty glass. Same again. Thanks. Seven eighty, please. Very good time. Thank Thanks. you. Hiya. 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 Have a pint of milk, please, Maureen. Did he turn up? <laughs> he certainly did. <gasps> and we had a lovely time. <gasps> Where's this done? <laughs> Airline pilot, she's met. Two twenty change. <laughs> oh, wow, you don't get many of them round here, do you? I know. <laughs> oh, God. See you later. <laughs> on to that. Hey, Ryder. Bye, yeah. I'm uh, chatting up a couple of our old mates today, see if I can persuade one of them to give me a job. Don't you think you'd be better going to people that don't already know you? <laughs> Thank you. No, Steve, no, I didn't okay. mean... Excuse me, you can't wait. Thank you. Anyway, I'll tell you all about it tonight. You better. <laughs> Uh, got you on your own at last, have I? Well, not really. Oh, I know. It's you again. Don't you have a shop of your own to run? I have millions to do that for me. No, I just want, uh, uh, one of these. Oh, uh, 43p, Fred, please. Uh, I'll meet in the Rovers at half past. All right. Well, I'll try, but... What were he saying? Speak up, I can't hear you. Can you not? Hearing going a bit, is it, dear? Yes, it is, and so will yours when you get to my age. I'll never be your age. I'd shoot myself first. Here you are. Here was a ring if you can't make it. What? Ciao! What was he saying? Just, what a nice day it was. Hello, <laughs> Rita, hello. Hello, Fred. Now then, ladies. <laughs> oh, no. Don't worry, I'm only keeping your seat warm. <laughs> I was told I'd have to move as soon as you got here. I didn't say that. I hope not. In fact, I insist you say, let me get you a drink. What'll it be? No, no, I'm going, honestly. I was going anyway. Well, another time, perhaps. Maureen, red wine. Yes, please. Shan't be a moment. Yes. Um, good luck with John. Look, keep me up to date, won't you? Well, as long as you keep me up to date. <gasps> That's not the same thing. <laughs> so, uh, what's he said then, Jack? No, no. Still in there. Oh, yeah. No, I think he's finishing off. Got on like house on fire. Been happy about everything I've shown him, so I'm not expecting any problems. Oh, well, very good. <laughs> Hi. Oh, well, hello. Hello. Um, let me get you a drink. I know, I know, it's all right. I've had enough. I was just wondering if word had got to you about the new man in my life. Anybody I know? Well, it depends. Do you know many airline pilots? You live the most exciting life of anybody I've ever met. <laughs> well, it's not deliberate. So, what? Uh, you met him through the travel agency, then? Would you believe a singles night? Oh. Do you know, it's not so long ago this would have been a decadence for me. What? Paying one thirty for a cheese sandwich. <laughs> I'd have been at home doing it myself to save money. Well, it's certainly all going your way at the moment. And I've just confirmed with Sean I am going to take his flat. Oh, good. Hey, you'll have a man to take back there soon hey, as well. Hey, don't jump the gun. <laughs> You're not thinking of getting rid of him, are you? You what? He's a peach. Some women would. They're called lemons. See ya. Uh, Bye, love. See you later. Hiya. Uh, hey, Mum. Can you lend me 20 quid? How much? Well, uh, 15. Any luck on the job front yet? Well, I'm seeing someone today. That's why I need the money. You can't ask someone to buy you a drink and give you a job, can you? What, are you drinking? Champagne? No. But you don't impress big players with a half a pint in the rovers, do you? You don't get back on your feet with ideas above your station, either. Here, don't burn it.
Hello. Hi, it's only me. Can I come up? Oh, hi, Liz. Yeah, come on up. Hi. Hi. <laughs> oh, I just wondered if you needed a hand. <laughs> oh, that's really kind of you, Liz, but actually, John's already offered. He should be here in a minute. Ah, I see. Bringing along a few knickknacks of his own, is he, you know? Spare toothbrush, clean undies. He is doing nothing of the sort. Told him I was moving flats this weekend and he offered to lend a hand. So it's full steam ahead then, is it's it? It's nothing serious. Hey, have you slept with him yet? No, I have not. Are you going to? Look, let's just take it steady, shall we? Right then. Well, I'll put the kettle on. That's if you can tell me which box it's in. Are you sticking around anyway, are you? Well, yeah, yeah, just to say hello for the sake of being friendly. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, do you get to fly all over the world then, or is it just domestic? Oh, I go wherever the airline tells me. Two days ago I was in Cape Town. Tomorrow I'm doing the shuttle to Stanton. Oh, must be ever so exciting. Never met an airline pilot before. Not really, no. You're just a glorified bus driver, really. <laughs> oh, this looks like it'll probably do the trick. Get off then. All right, I'll show you out. All I can say is, if you ever get bored, send him my way. <laughs> bye bye, Elizabeth. See ya. Bye. Uh, bye bye, John. Cheerio. <laughs> oh, thanks ever so much for doing this. It'll take two seconds. Then I'll put that curtain track back up if you like. Only if you let me take you for a pizza later. Deal. Popular today. Hello? Hey, it's Ken. Can I come up for a moment? Ken, um. Yeah, I suppose it's all right. Oh, hi. Oh, hi. I'll look in, see if you need any help. Oh, that's the third offer I've had this morning, but thanks anyway. Right, well, my door's always open with anything you need, you know that. Oh, thanks, Ken. In fact, I was going to suggest, uh, why don't you go have a bite to eat at my place? I'm sure you won't want to be cooking. Thanks very much, Ken, but I've already made plans. Oh, right, well, sure there'll be plenty of other times. Done. Oh, great, thanks. Uh, Ken, this is uh, John. I think I told you about him the other day. Oh, hi. Neighbours are very friendly around here, aren't they? <laughs> Actually, I'm Deirdre's ex-husband. Oh! Oh, I see. Where was he from? Well, his family are from Tisnet, but he was living in Agadir when I met him. Oh, Agadir. I know it well. So, um, he was husband number two, I take it? Ah, uh, I'm sorry? I mean, you were married to him after you got divorced from, uh, Ken, was it? Ah, uh, as a matter of fact, he was number three. My first husband, Ray, Tracy's father, is living somewhere in Holland. Ah. You and Ken married long? Um, 11 years. Uh, by all means, tell me to mind my own business if you think I'm prime. Uh, no, no. Ask what you like. Have you ever thought of getting back together? Well, I have entertained the thought in the past. I mean, sometimes it's just the easiest option, isn't it, to drift back into something familiar. But that's all water under the bridge now. Only you seem quite close. Well, we're friendly with one another, just like you are with your ex-wife. <laughs> what? Well, I'm civil with her, yes, but I wouldn't move into a flat across the street from her. Look, I took this place because it was convenient and cheap, not because of the neighbours. Yeah, I'm not saying you did. The fact that Ken was living across the road nearly put me off. Yeah, I'm sure. You think there's still something between us, don't you? No, no, I don't think anything. I hardly know you. I'm just, uh, interested. Look. Me and Ken are ancient history, believe me. <sighs> Look, I think I've done enough of packing for one day and I'm starving. What do you say we go and get that pizza? Well, now you come to mention it, uh, I still haven't quite got over that long haul. I think I might go and get some sleep. Oh, all right, fine. Are you going right this minute? Yeah, I've got an early start tomorrow. Oh, well, OK, maybe we'll do the pizza another night. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll give you a ring. Bye. Bye. Hiya. Oh, hi. Hey, are you not going out on the town with we'll Loverboy tonight, then? No, Liz, I'm not. Something happened, Walshock? Well, 
I thought everything was going fine. And Ken popped in to say hello, popped out again, and everything went downhill from then on. I don't understand. Well, I'm not sure I do, really, Liz. But I could see John was not impressed by the fact that I was living across the road from my ex-husband. Oh, sounds to me like he might be a bit jealous. Well, I don't think so, Liz. Anyway, he was off like a shot as soon as Ken had gone. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if that's the last I ever see of him. Morning. Well, I was delighted to meet the new man in your life. Uh, John, was it? You know his name. In fact, the amount of time you hung around, you should be able to write his flaming biography. You let him know you were in no uncertain terms. You think I was behaving maliciously? I know you were. On the contrary, I'm doing the man a favour. He's helping you to move into a flat over the road from your ex-husband, and you obviously hadn't told him. I thought it was very adult of me, actually. Yeah, well, now he thinks I was covering it up. And I'll probably never see him again. So I hope you're satisfied. What have I done to deserve these? You don't have to have done anything. Only I, I would have understood if you'd wondered why I didn't tell you about Ken. It, it wasn't a secret. I, I just hadn't got round to mentioning it. No, I'm glad I found out. When you meet someone important, you want to know all about them. You feel cheated you weren't part of their lives before you met them. I know. Let's find out some more, shall we? What about dinner tonight? It'd be a kind of flat warming. Yeah, fantastic. Half seven? I'll be there. To a very happy time here. Oh, I don't know. Champagne and flowers all in one day. Hey, I hope you like Mexican food. I've never cooked it before. I've never eaten it before. I thought pilots had tried every cuisine going. Hotel food is much the same whatever country you're in. Oh. Still, there must be compensations. A woman in every port. Oh, as opposed to an ex right across the street, you mean? <sighs> I'm sorry, I asked for that. <sighs> Look, I told you, me and Ken are finished, and it's true. There's a big age gap between us. It didn't really matter until recently, but now, well, some people age quickly, don't they? I don't mean physically, but mentally, in their attitudes. The only feeling I have for him now, and it sounds awful, but it's true, is pity. He's facing redundancy next month and all. What does he do? He's a teacher. He's tried his hand at a lot of things in his time. Taxi driver, journalist. But he's taught most of his life, and now that's all going to end. Let me ask around at the airport. <laughs> I can't see Ken landing a jumbo. Oh, I have a lot of contacts there. I don't know if you've been there recently, but it's huge. It's like a city in its own right. Now I'll see what I can do. Do you play Good Samaritan to everybody's ex-husband? Only if they're very special, Deirdre. Well, no. It really is excellent, Deirdre. A talented cook as well. As well? Well, as well as, um, as, well as everything else. <laughs> no, I really can't believe my luck. Oh, are you all right? It's just a bit spicy for me, that's all. <laughs> it's all the chilies. They didn't tell you how many to put in. <laughs> you know, um, you never did answer my question about a girl in every port. Uh, they're called stopovers. Oh, it doesn't have quite the same ring, does it? No, there hasn't been anybody at all since the divorce. Why did you get divorced? A flight out to the Far East with a two, three-day stopover, you can be gone for the best part of a week. And uh, when you're on call, you're off at short notice. I just think she got bored. Another drink? Oh, no, no. Better not, I'm driving. You don't have to. Not if you stay the night. I don't want to, um, rush into... Before we're ready. Well, I'm ready. <laughs> 